Every plant needs three basic things to survive, light, water, and soil, which sounds straightforward in theory, but anyone who's brought a plant home knows that in practice can be a lot more nuanced than that. How much light does it need? How much water? What about pests? And how do you make it so that your plant doesn't just survive, but that it grows and flourishes? When I first began collecting houseplants several years ago, this was all new to me and I got a lot of it wrong. Probably killed more houseplants than I kept alive. But over the years and through a lot of trial and error, I've learned a ton. Most plants do fairly well under my care now, but I'm still far from an expert. But I wanted to talk with someone who is. So I recently sat down with plant pro and fellow Charlotte creator, Ashley Anita. Ashley has over 250 plants and I wanted to learn from her what are the best tricks and habits that we can use to really help our plants thrive. Awesome, well thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. It's an honor. Awesome, well let's dive right into this. So our first habit is that we need to make sure that our plants are getting an appropriate amount of sunlight. We all know that sun is important to our plants. How do we know how much sun our plants need? That is such a great question and it's such an important aspect of plant care. So a lot of these nurseries and greenhouses will provide care instructions, which I love when they do that, so we can bring it home, know how much light, know how much water, that kind of thing. But if they don't, you know, these tropical plants usually do well with bright indirect light. And as long as they're not getting sunlight directly on the leaves of the plant, which could cause burning of the leaves, they should be really, really happy. That's so good. And I've definitely noticed that just by experimenting a bit, seeing how my plant is doing in different situations, that can really help a lot. Some plants do better with less light, some do better with more. But how can you really tell if your plant is getting, say, enough sunlight, too much, too little? How do we find that Goldilocks, that just right amount? That's a great question. And it's fun to try out different locations with our plants, but if you're seeing that your plant is in a lower light area and it's not putting out new growth and it is the growing season, chances are that plant needs more light. And if your plant is in a window where it's getting a lot of bright sunlight and you are seeing the crisping of the leaves, they're turning brown, they're turning a light color, generally that means that it's getting way too much light. Okay, I love that, but I feel like something that I've definitely struggled with in the past and probably a lot of us can resonate with is often we aren't really dealing with having too much sunlight, although that happens happens, but quite frequently we just don't have enough sunlight to work with. I know we used to live in a north facing apartment, so we pretty much never got enough sun to really help my plants to thrive. So is there anything that you can do in situations where you just don't have a ton of natural light available to you? Yes, supplemental lighting. I swear by grow lights. I have them all throughout my house. There are so many different brands that you can choose from and some of them look amazing. You would never even know that they are a grow light. Light, but they really really help those of us which many of us don't have enough light in our homes so it just helps your plant get enough light so that it can grow and thrive that's so good and we will have some links to some different products the grow lights and a few other things that Ashley recommends in the description box below so definitely be sure to check that out okay so we've got the appropriate amount of light coming in now talk me through the moisture levels I know that's another foundational ingredient for caring for plants how do we tell how often our plants need water how much water to give them great question watering is the easiest way to kill our plant so what I would recommend doing, if you have a watering schedule that you stick to, just make sure you are checking the moisture levels of the soil every time you're watering your plant, because there's not a guarantee that that plant is going to be thirsty on a schedule. The moisture in the soil really varies depending on the season, the temperature, and the humidity. So practically kind of what does that look like? Checking on your plants once a week, twice a week, more often, less often, kind of how do you figure that out? So you'll want to check more often during the growing months, spring, summer, beginning of fall, and then you won't need to check as often, obviously, during the winter months when the plant isn't growing. But I'd recommend for these tropical plants to make sure that the soil is at least halfway dry to fully dry before you water them again. And some plants will actually give you little signs that they're thirsty. Maybe the leaves are drooping, like with a peace lily or a phytonia, the leaves will kind of flop down when they're thirsty. And another helpful tip is if your plant has really thick leaves, like a succulent, it can store a lot of the water in the leaves so you don't have to water it as often. Versus if you have a plant that has thinner leaves, like a philodendron or something like that, you will have to water it more often. 
That was really good. And I know that's something that I've really found helpful in just figuring out how much water my plants actually need is a moisture meter. Yes. I found this for like $10 on Amazon and it really does an amazing job of telling you if my, your plant is dry, it really needs water, if the you know soil is moist, it's got the perfect amount of you know, wetness to it, I guess, or if it is, you know, too wet and perhaps needs better drainage. So this can be a really helpful and very inexpensive tool. And then talk to me too about watering technique. Are there some ways to water your plants that are better than others? Yes, bottom watering is a great way to water your plants and make sure that the plant gets the optimal amount of moisture without becoming too saturated. So to bottom water, it's very, very simple. You just fill up a bowl or a sink, put some water in there, place your plant into the water and allow it to absorb up as much water as it needs. And then when you notice it's not absorbing anymore, take it out and it should be good to go. You can also water from the top, which is fine as well. But if you do water from the top, try not to get water on the leaves and a thin spouted watering can is perfect for that. And drainage is key too. If you're watering from the top, you need to make sure that that water has somewhere to escape. So a hole at the bottom of your plant pot with a tray or something like that underneath is perfect. But then another important habit, especially during the growing months, is to make sure that you're fertilizing your plants so that they can get the nutrients that they need, kind of like we take supplements on a daily basis. Yes, that's such a good point, and it's something that gets often overlooked or can feel overwhelming as a plant parent. I know it was for me, especially when I first started plant collecting. And what I recommend to keep it simple, I'm kind of a keep it simple plant parent, and I recommend getting a fertilizer that's labeled for house plants. And starting at half strength during the beginning of the growing season, it gives your plant a chance to ease into it, helps prevent those roots from burning. And then if your plant really enjoys it, you can maybe go full strength during the growing months, which is an exciting time for planty people. And then ease off again and taper off in the fall months, and then don't fertilize at all during the winter months. And if you are looking for a fertilizer for cactus and succulents, make sure to get one that is labeled for cactus and succulents. Now, I love that. It is always so exciting to see new leaves emerging on plants, but it is important that we're not you know, trying to fertilize them during the months of the you know, fall and winter when they do go a bit more dormant. So fertilizing our plants is one great way to ensure that we have healthy, thriving plants, but something else that's really easy that we can do is just every so often to replace the soil in our plants with fresh, nutrient-rich soil. So talk to me a bit about why that's important and how we should do that. Yes, there are a number of reasons why that's important. Um, the soil can become less good at retaining nutrients. Um, so it's great to replenish that with the nutrient rich soil. It also can become hydrophobic. So when you're watering your plant, it just goes straight through and the soil doesn't actually retain any moisture anymore, which I have some plants right now that it's doing that with. I think we all do, right? So there are a number of ways we can go about replenishing the soil of our plants. First of all, there are customized soil options. You know, we're only replacing the soil of our plants maybe every one to two years. And for me, it's worth the investment to make sure I'm using the right soil to help prevent root rot on my plant. But we can also make our own soil with a really easy recipe. I know you brought some examples to show us. So walk me through what is kind of the recipe that you like to use to create your own soil. Sure. So here we have a few different things. This is a potting mix. You can use whatever potting mix that you have at your house. I would recommend staying away from only using potting mix because it's made to retain a lot of moisture. And as I mentioned, too much moisture can cause root rot of our plants. So a very simple soil recipe, and there are a lot of recipes out there, but I like to keep it simple, is a 50 percent potting mix okay. and then 50 percent some other substrate so you can use orchid bark which is what i have here perlite you could also use pumice you could use a blend of the three but the main goal is for it to be well draining because these tropical plants do not like their roots to be sitting in water so 50 percent something that's going to retain moisture and then 50 percent something that's going to allow good drainage exactly then something else that we can do that serves both an aesthetic and a practical function is to wipe down the leaves of our plants as we know notice dust accumulating on them. Helps them to look better, but then it also too helps them to better absorb this light of the sun. That's so true. And it is something that's often overlooked in our plant care routine. 
but like you said, it helps them have better photosynthesis and absorb the sunlight. You know, these are essentially the solar panels of the plant. And just like a solar panel, if it's covered in a layer of dust, it's not going to allow the sun to penetrate. And especially if you have a plant in like a lower light area and it's covered in dust, the chances of that plant being able to put out any kind of new growth is minimal. That's so good. Just something to be careful of too, though, is if your plant does have smaller leaves, they are quite fragile. So I would definitely say that this is more of a tip for plants that have bigger leaves. So your monsteras, your snake plants, things like that, that are a little bit more sturdy with plants with very gentle leaves you do want to be careful okay but then talk to me about dead and dying leaves obviously they don't look good i don't love them i don't think any of us do but is it fine to trim them or should we leave them on the plant how should we deal with them my stance is just to trim off those yellow leaves. They're absorbing energy from the plant that could be used for new leaf growth, new root growth, and they just don't look good at all. Now, if it's an older leaf, that's totally normal for it to turn yellow, especially if we're coming into the winter months, just trim those off. But if it's a newer leaf that's turning yellow and the older leaves are still green, that could be a sign that your plant is struggling with lighting, watering, or some sort of pests. And then talk to me about cutting off brown tips. It's something that I've seen on Instagram. I've tried it a few times before. Is it something that you recommend, something that you do to yourself? Are we harming the plant in any way by doing that? That's actually such a helpful tip. And it's something that I do with my plants. A lot of times when we bring these plants, for example, when we bring these plants in from a greenhouse, they are acclimating to their new environment with lower humidity and the outside of the leaves will get this kind of brown, crispy thing going on. And it's just so much easier than looking at these brown leaves all the time to just trim that little crispy part off you know make sure to use clean shears because you don't want bacteria to be transferred to the leaves but just trim it off and you would never know it looks like a new plant that's so good the one caveat i will add to that is make sure that you're only cutting off the brown section I tried this on a couple of my plants and let's just say it turns like yellow and brown in the area that you're cutting the perfectly healthy leaf so it's fine to do it to the brown section. Don't do it where it's green. <laughs> so talk to me a bit more about acclimating our plants. When we bring a new plant home into our house, is there anything specific that we need to be doing, things to keep in mind? You know, How can we do that and do it well? So when it comes to acclimating our plants, there's not anything specifically that we can do. You could incorporate a humidifier, but really you just need to be patient and allow that plant time to acclimate itself to your home and if you see that some of the leaves are turning brown that is totally normal don't panic you're not killing your plant you're just giving it time to acclimate and then when you see the new growth coming out as long as the new growth looks good you're fine that's so good and definitely makes me feel better about some plants that i brought home that i swear i thought that they were dying on me when i brought them home you just need to give them a bit of time. Yeah, take the pressure off. Just give it some time. And one smaller tip is just to make sure that you rotate your plants every so often to make sure that your plant doesn't grow lopsided. That's so true, especially for plants that we have in our windows or on a shelf or in a corner, it can become lopsided. So just give it a little rotate every so often and it will prevent that lopsided look. Yeah. Right now I have a rubber plant that is pretty much only growing on one side, which is fine because right now it's up against a wall but if I were to pull that thing out and put it, say, on my coffee table, it would look crazy because all of the growth is only on one side of the plant. So to avoid that, just rotate them. And talk to me about repotting. Obviously, that's something that we need to do every so often, but how can you tell when your plant needs to be repotted? So that's a great question, especially coming into springtime. This is the perfect time to repot our plants coming into the growing season. So there are a few telltale signs when it comes to repotting. First, are the roots poking out of the top of the pot, on the bottom of the pot? Secondly, has the soil become hydrophobic or when you water your plant, does the water just go straight through and the soil's not absorbing moisture anymore because that plant needs the soil to have at least some moisture, right? And then the third tip, has your plant stopped putting out new growth? Because if so, it's usually a sign that it needs to be repotted. I think that's really helpful, but what do you do? And this is something that I've wondered is how do you deal with, if you're happy with the size of the plant, that you have should you repot it like what should you do in that situation that is such a great question and i never hear anyone talk about that you know and that's true a lot of our plants are the size we want them to be when, when we buy them 
So I would recommend pruning the plant, just cutting it back. You know, it will put off new shoots, so it'll get a little bit bushier, which, you know, it's usually nice with plants. And the other thing that you can do is trim back some of the roots. I've heard up to a third of the roots, it's okay to trim. And then that plant is going to focus more on repairing those roots and root growth and less on the leaves of the plant, which will keep it kind of that smaller size. It's a bonsai technique, actually. I love that. I'm, I think I need to try that out. Yeah. Okay, then last but certainly not least, let's talk about everyone's least favorite part of owning plants, or at least I know my least favorite part, dealing with pests. Please tell me, how do you deal with fungus gnats? Oh my gosh, fungus gnats, they're so pesky. And it's just inevitable, right, that we're gonna have fungus gnats when we bring either house plants or new soil into our homes. So it's very, very simple actually to get rid of them. And it's using a product called Mosquito Bits. And I actually brought some today to kind of show you and show everybody. And I like to make something called Mosquito Bits tea with it. And it's really, really simple to make. So you use your Mosquito Bits or any product with the active ingredient that's in Mosquito Bits and you take four tablespoons per gallon of water. And I like to put them in some sort of filter, like a tea bag or something, so they don't clog up the spout of my watering can. And then the water, you want the water to be hot, not kind of cold or warm and not boiling, just hot. And then you let it sit in the watering can for about an hour at least so that the tea becomes really saturated with that active ingredient. And then you wanna use this every time you water your plants for the next few watering cycles until you see all of the fungus gnats are gone. And yes, it's just that simple. And when you're watering with the Mosquito Bits tea, make sure you're watering from the top and watering the topsoil because that's where the fungus gnats actually lay all of their eggs. So you wanna make sure you're getting it all over that top layer and it should get rid of them for you. That is so helpful. Yeah. I cannot wait to try that out. And it doesn't harm the plants in any way? No, I mean, people will use it on their herbs and their edible vegetables. It doesn't harm the plants at all. It's really, really easy to use and it's great. Love that. And then talk to me about other types of pests. Obviously, gnats are probably one of the more prevalent ones, but there are different types of pests that can really infect and affect our plants. So how do we identify and deal with those? One of the best ways to prevent pests coming into our homes on our plants is to check when we're actually buying the plant that there aren't any pests on the plant at the store. So you can check the leaves, you can even take a look at the roots, make sure there's no like little pests hiding in amongst the roots. And then when you bring it home, spray off the leaves with water. That way it'll get rid of any eggs or any pests that maybe you didn't see at the store. And you can even quarantine that plant for a couple of weeks just to make sure that if there are any pests on there, you can kind of catch it before it spreads and transfers to your other plants. But there are so many different ways to get rid of pests. I've even gone so far as to release like thousands of ladybugs in my plant room oh my before. <laughs> it was wild. We had ladybugs everywhere. But again, I like to keep it simple. And there are three main products that I can't live without that I 10 out of 10 recommend to Walk everybody. Me them. Yes. So of course we've gone over mosquito bits for fungus gnats. They're absolutely great. Then we have insecticidal soap. You can spray this on the leaves of your plant and it will get rid of pests. It's absolutely wonderful. And then this is my like, I cannot live without it now. And it's systemic granules. And I had a really bad thrips outbreak last year. And this helped get rid of all of the thrips. And for the first time in forever, my plants are putting out new growth this growing season. And I'm so, so excited for this year. So this is great. You just apply it every, I think it's like six to eight weeks. The instructions are on there and it'll help with so many different pests, thrips, mealybugs, so on and so forth. So these are my three tried and trues that I can't live without. Love that. Those are the 10 habits and tips to really help your plants thrive. And Ashley, thank you so so much for coming on my channel, sharing your wisdom with us. I cannot wait to begin implementing some of these tips. But now tell me, how can my audience connect with you? Thank you so much for letting me come over today and joining you and connecting me with your wonderful community. And I hope this video was helpful to it everybody. Was helpful to me, so I'm sure it was helpful Aww, to everyone. Else. Thank you so much. And if anyone is interested in seeing more planty content, you can find me on my YouTube channel at Plant Life with Ashley and Nita. And we also have a great plant community on Instagram as well. Ashley has an amazing YouTube channel. You have to check it out. I'll have all of the links to that in the description box. I've been following her for like over a year now. I love it. I'm obsessed. Well, I'm wondering if maybe you can come on my channel one day and go plant shopping with me. That would be incredible. Incredible. I'm so always down for a new plant. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much again for joining You're us. You're so welcome. Thank you.
All right, but that's everything for today's video. I hope that this was helpful for you though, that you maybe learned something. And if you did, I would love to hear about it. So be sure to let me know what it is you're taking away from this in the comments below. And before I go, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already for more simple and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week. Check out Ashley's channel as well. Everything will be linked up for you in the description box below. She really has just such an incredible plant focused channel. I know you guys are going to love her. But until next time, friends, I am wishing you all an incredible day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ooh, that was a loud one. It's just the chair, guys. It's just the oh chair. My <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm gonna water all my plants now. And my succulents are like, no, girl, we don't. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah, no touchy. I know one thing that's really been helpful for me and just figuring out how much plant my what plant my water needs. <laughs> I told you, refrigerator, microwave. <laughs> I like committed so hard to that one. Oh. I did one where I like tried to round off the thing and Why? it crisped up because I didn't like the shape of oh it once God. I removed the thing. This leaf is an aesthetic. I'm going to yes. make it my shape. Yes. No, I was trying to like reshape the oh. leaf. And how did it go? Not good. Not good. <laughs> That's why I included this in the first place.